introduce yourself. Okay, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Salis Mohamed. I'm, stand, I'm the acting chairman of the PIC for the Huda University, Busan. Mm. The journey for the establishment of Huda University, Busan, has reached the next stop. Will you share with us the journey so far, the success story of the journey so far? Well, in the past uh, two, three years, the promoters of this university have consistently worked providing their hard-earned <coughs> funds to help us to get to where we are today. It's not been easy. We have solicited the cooperation of the community here in Zamfara State. We have engaged with community leaders, we have engaged with religious leaders, we have engaged with academics and like-minded individuals in the private and non-profit sector, including the community people. I think it's an idea that its time has come. So we are here today celebrating this milestone. And the milestone is nothing less than this historic visit for inspection by the National Universities Commission. And uh, we've been here since yesterday. Most of you have seen what we, are, what we have on the ground. We've gone around and we think, and we strongly believe that we are making the mark that is required. And we are going to continue in this stride. And we are going to move forward and the aims and objectives for which this university is established is going to be achieved. The bottom line of which is to educate the people in the immediate environment and educate Nigerians and continue to project ourselves as good people of a great country. During your visit at the MS Palace, you made mention that Uda University is going to be different from the conventional universities. Will you throw more light on this? Uda University is going to be unique. Unique in, sense, in the sense that it's going to operate like the 21st century university, a university that is built around ICT and technology, a university that has a focus on community development. Therefore, Huda University will be a development university. Every product we churn out from this university will have the capacity to either seek for employment or get employed or employ himself and become employers of others. Having been recording this success. What will be our next expectation? Our next expectation is that the visiting team will go back and immediately return with a very favorable uh, result. And then we'll go to the next step. The next step now will be for us to advertise and get in students and follow the normal procedure. And then we key into the ongoing academic session of Nigeria. Sir, many Sir, youths are traveling as a country for education. Do you think uh, this institution will cop that kind of uh, the money we are spending outside the country in terms of education in the country? Now, if you ask me that question, I will now have to answer you from my personal perspective. In, 17 years ago, I had the chance to go out of this country. I refused to go. Because at that time, I knew that a time like this will come. And I will have this kind of privilege to stand here as the chairman of the, uh, of the implementation committee of a private university and talk to young Nigerians. There's no need to go outside. There is no country on the surface of the earth that is as good as Nigeria. I say this with all sense of responsibility and all the people that are getting out of this country are just trying to go and live on the sweat of others. If you cast your mind back 200 years ago, all those countries they were going to, we are, we are worse than the situation we are in in Nigeria. If anybody thinks we are in a bad situation. Therefore, those that are going out, I wish them, I don't think I wish them, well, I wish them good luck. It's their choice, it's a fundamental right. But for us, we are closing that gap and we are going to create, we are going to contribute to creating the necessary environment that will prevent people from getting out of this country. How many, yeah, sir, yeah, yeah. How many are you talking about this? Are, are we expecting at the tech of station? No, we are taking up with uh, three faculties immediately. How many departments? 15 of them. What are the we are Can we know them? Well, we, we have them, we are sharing them to you now. We gave them to you this morning. How is there anybody who doesn't have them? There are 15 courses that we are doing. How affordable yeah. is affordable. It's going to be very, very affordable. And I tell you why it's going to be affordable. This is Gusau in Zamfara State. This is Northern Nigeria. All the people that are promoting this university are indigenous people to this area. We know our economic strength. We know our consideration. We know what the uh, pra, uh, pra, uh, um, uh, public schools are charging. We know what other private universities are charging. So this Huda University will be very, very affordable. So how, how is this um, university uh, going to help? It's uh, located in the Northwest Zone, yeah. uh, helping tackling uh, the issue of um, bandit insecurity in, in particular, in Zamfara State. 
anybody who has the benefit of education has less likelihood to become a bandit. The reason why, one of the reasons why we think banditry persists is because people have very low education. And those who have education, they don't know what to do with it. That means there is an education that is not skilled. So what we the university will do is to close those gaps. We are going to close those gaps because when we produce a product from here, it has no reason, no, no reason whatsoever to embrace brand, banditry or even to contribute to that. Because people are looking for a quick way of making money. We are going to train our products to have a sustainable way of making money. And they will make money and they will be happy and they will help their parents and then they will, they will reclaim their humanity. I'm not saying it is lost, but they will reclaim it. Uh, doctor, yeah. uh, one of the arguments canvassed by ASU mm. is uh, ASU is challenging uh, proliferation of private universities. And uh, even though majority are against that decision, because considering the number of doors knocking on the door of this uh, government-owned universities and looking at the care facilities, may we know your personal opinion about establishment of more private universities? Well, that is one of them. Okay, um, if, if you take off your question from the position of ASU, yeah. I will refer you back to them. Go and ask them, what is the carrying capacity of the universities where they are serving? When students applied last year to be taken, how many did they take? The remaining that are on the ground, what, do they, what, are, what are they going to do with them? Their major argument is not everybody must go to university. There are polytechnics where entrepreneurship are, are strongly, uh, people are being strongly trained. Then what's their argument? They have no argument, then they've defeated themselves. It's not my, it's not my issue. You brought them, it's their, it's their issue. Yes. Anybody who can a position should be able to defend it. I will not so defend it for them. Opinion? My own opinion, my own opinion. Yeah. When you say proliferation, it's a personal opinion. Right. Yes. Nigeria is a country that has 200 million people. If wishes were horses, I would like every Nigerian to have a good education and a good university education for that matter. What does it take from us? The Englishman said the more, the merrier. So anybody who comes within the four wall of any institution that can give him education is, is giving him light. So for anybody to say there are too many universities in Nigeria, so what does he want to do? So I think what they are saying also saying is that quality and standards. Sure. Quality and standards. Fine. So how are you going to ensure that the students you are turn up Okay. The, I give you one. Sim, I give you one assurance. You were here with us since yesterday. You saw the you saw the quality of the people that we have. You saw the quality of the people that we have in the in the implementation committee. Did you see them? You had the comments in the deputy governor's office. You have the comments of the traditional rulers. And you looked around, we and you see, We're huh? Let's get what we want. and you see the quality of the people that we have. So the quality of the people that we have determines the kind of quality we are going to produce. So we are starting on the right foot, and we in Huda University are going to produce some of the best materials that Nigeria has ever seen. So uh, Muhammad Siraj Osman Haske, the secretary of the Planning and Implementation Committee, proposed Huda University. Buso. So what do you want to tell us? Yes. What I want to tell the gentlemen of the press today, they have seen it too, is just to corroborate that Huda University is a reality and Huda University is about to take off and Huda University is well prepared from the comments, from the observation by the team of NUC. So at least we are good to go. What is something, what is tracking the thing that we know we have uh, other private universities have to be in a day? And uh, what is the thing about Buddha that uh, you think we are tracked? Uh, uh, Huda, Huda is not only a university, it's a modern university. Moving with time, moving with technology, moving with all modern developments. So with this, it will give an attraction beyond expectation, beyond even thinking, because this is a generation that Huda is moving with the generation. 
So with the advent of technology, with the advent of time, with the advent of modern facilities of all you can think of related to academia, Huda is ready for that and I think it will attract anybody. Huda as best of its kind, uh, the first uh, private university based in Africa. Uh, how do you think we, it will contribute to the de educational development of the states? Uh, uh, refer back to the present situation in Zamfara State. Until now, the state university is not yet picked up properly. And think of the population in Zamfara State only. We are over 5 million and we have only one federal university. So having another university will complement the effort of federal government and state government to give a, uh, enabling, uh, enabling ground for young generation coming up, which I think it will give a lot of contribution to the present insecurity challenges we are facing. My name is Professor Aubakar Sani Ridwan Matazu. I'm a professor of law and the international law for that matter. I am the chairman of the board of trustees of Huda University. How do you comment so, on this enviable position the journey for the actualization of Huda University has reached? The journey has not been that easy, but with the resilience of the duo of the young men we have who have been piloting the IPS of this university, we have come this age together with the commitment we got from both the promoter and the government of Zampara State. Here we are, we are saying to God be the glory, we have reached where we are to an enviable position whereby it is glaringly clear for everybody to see. Uh, do you see uh, this effort as bridging the gap between the north and the south in terms of education? It is an effort yet foot to see the level we can go now and bridge that gap. That is very yawning. The gap is so yawning because we don't have this type of university in this part of the country. I could vividly say that if you go to the whole of Kazuna, say we have only one state university, that is Alcala University, if you go to Kano, no matter how big the town looks, we don't have too much public, private universities. Most of the time, reliance is paid heavily on public university, whereby maybe now the narrative is being changed with the coming on board of Huda University, through which we hope the bridge, the gap will now be bridged for us now to see the level at which we can go now in trying to see we, whether we can catch up or not. But hopefully we are trying to see how we can run past time in catching up with the gap left. How sustainable is this giant strategy? It is sustainable. If I could stop here, I can say it is sustainable, it is indeed sustainable and it is sustainable as well. Sustainable in the sense that the caliber of persons we have on board as members of the Board of Trustees including the members of the plan and uh, implementation committee. We are working around the clock to see that we don't leave any sin left behind for us to see that we achieve the same target we made for our safety thing that the earlier we have been all the observations now the team from the NOC is making the more we get the license whereby we commence academic activities in this university. So the sustainability is for sure that we are going to achieve it, we are going to sustain it. When we started this, we have that idea behind our heart that we have laid a solid foundation whereby even if after our demise, others who could inherit it could now see to it that they sustain it to the position which is very much accompanied by every member of the society and for Nigeria at large. So, uh, if the university finally uh, takes off, mm. what kind of skills will Nigeria and Nigerians expect from a graduate who is joining up from these uh, African? A lot of skills. Skills that we can, cannot be good in public universities. We will channel our activities and the energy towards those gaps that are left by public universities whereby we don't need now to revisit treating people with only a degree, a sheet of paper that one goes out without having gotten a skill. 
Here we could combine the theory and the skill, the expertise will be there. Everybody who comes through Al Huda, this forward you can see. Then he will, when he goes out, we are nurturing the younger one, not with the intention of them to be employable by a government or any other organization. What we want is that at the time one graduates from here, he will be able to be an employer of labor himself. Uh, Prof, uh, mm -hmm. one of, let me put the argument of the federal government mm -hmm. against professors like mm -hmm. you coming from public universities. Mm -hmm. You know the human resource gap mm -hmm. in most of the federal universities. Let's take Usman Danfordi, where you came from. Your own faculty of law. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at the master plan, mm -hmm. you are yet to meet the human resource target of that faculty since establishment today. And here are we pulling resourceful people like you coming to develop their energy in building a private university again. That is why the federal government is accusing you of paying much more attention to a private entrepreneurship, visiting sabbaticals, and people like you taking bigger responsibilities, abandoning the primary university, where you are not to be the professor Matavi. We are not abandoning our primary place of primary responsibility, but we are widening the scope of our community services. That is the basic thing. Why didn't the scope of our community services, if not because of us, the type of me, even my vice chancellor is here. Isn't it? We consider it as a community service we are rendering to the, to the, the society, whereby if not because of this type of activities taking place with the coming on board of this university, then it maybe others may not have the opportunity to study in our universities. The public universities may not have much to accommodate. There are many, but they are not enough. Not enough in the sense that not everybody from Pazza Pell could now go to Sokoto, especially at this material time whereby we are paid with a lot of security challenges. In this sense, that somebody from a nearby village in Gusau here will easily carry his own bike coming to Huda to pay less and get much. So in essence, professors have a duty to play. By the time you reach a professor, you are not just for only one person. When, 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 when you're in the Basti, you are for all. And what I would have expected you to do is that, no challenging the idea behind the creation of private universities. I'm not but the, no, 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 I know, I'm coming where you wanted me to land, isn't it? Yeah. But the government that is day in, day out now, creating or establishing other universities, whereby it knows there is a challenge of human resources. Yeah. That is. So the government should be blamed much, rather than individuals or academic staff of some universities, whereby you create, you born a child, you have to feed him. Then who feed him? The father. <laughs> the father. And we are now taking responsibility of parents now to say that we do something which maybe the government might have felt or might have not power properly. But much is expected from you. Much is expected from us. Know. We have grown so many younger ones. They are there and we are always there. We are here. We are there. We are everywhere to see that we have now nurtured the younger one who could carry the banner from where we might have stopped. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> now. Uh, in taking inventory of what has been put in place by the proposed Buddha University. And uh, what are you going to say so far? Sorry, sir, it's designation team. Oh, yeah, a member of the team. Member of the team. Uh, is, it, is it the implementation team or the NUC? NUC. NUC. Okay. Uh, well, we came here as a six man committee led by our director. What we have seen so far. Sorry, can you mention the name of the director? Yeah. The director, just director. Um, 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 it is very impressive, but uh, there's still work needs to be done. You know, these are procedural things. You just don't come in one day and you make your conclusion. We have made some observations, which we have told the uh, Planning and Implementation Committee of the Uda University, and they have accommodated that. But the process is that uh, we have seen uh, about uh, six lecture rooms, we have seen the Senate chamber, we have seen the laboratory, and uh, we have also offered advices. Part of these things have a sequence of engagement. In that sequence of engage engagement, the first thing is that uh, the, uh, the university in the processes will have a license. Second day is that every program level need to be accredited and before it now commences at interim level. At interim level. But in so doing, um, there are some things that uh, we observe that need to be put in place because of the volume of the people that may be here. There are so many causes which they propose. 
and some courses are a bit duplicated, but we have given them advices that some of this uh, program can be switched together and some can stand on their own. But so far so good. Uh, we're impressed that uh, a community like this, both the promoters of this thing and the implementation committee, uh, well-experienced people. We have so many professors, so many doctors, and uh, well-wishers too. And uh, well, we're impressed. I have not been to this part of the country for some time. I came, I saw so many economic activities. And any time you have university like this, it is a complementary thing. Because the state will have their own, the federal will have their own. But we ask ourselves, is it enough? And then the answer is no. So we need to encourage our people to have this kind of uh, universities that will now, that will engage all the citizenry that are very close there. So this is what we've been doing so, so how, far. How does the NUC encourage private participation in universities? There are special departments to do that. And some of these head of departments are here with us. And each department, since you have a department that has to do with the establishment of private universities, you can see government uh, goodwill to do that. And uh, I think it is quite encouraging all over the country. We have been having people making proposals here and there. But what we will not compromise is the standard. You don't have a, a glorified secondary school to become a university. But we saw the edifice that they have here as a, as a temporary site. We are moving to the permanent site to also give our advices on that. So, so, so how, how is the commission also uh, doing? What is it doing to ensure uh, standard uh, so that um, uh, the popular thing that Nigerians uh, university graduates uh, have, uh, have been, those who can contribute to national development? Well, I will not comment too much on that, but I will tell you the standards of the NUC is that we are here to ensure that our checklist have been followed. And once you follow that checklist, you now begin to have quality of discharge of those people who are now graduate, especially from this kind of well, university. Doctor, what, sometime, doctor, sometimes you, you hold an argument as to reason why, because of people knocking for the door, you always approve universities because you want to create access. But the argument of us in the country is that you are creating access when you know that the quality is at the value of the NUC is always approving to make up with the requirement of access without managing the quality. I heard you, but I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> so what next after this? Uh, after this visit uh, is that uh, some other teams will come again because they are so level of uh, this thing. And this one will be what we call expert specific. Those one will be, every department will have a professor that will come for this visit so that they will not take, we are looking at the structures, we are looking at the, uh, so many courses they have. But the next level is going to be uh, uh, what we call uh, um, 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 expert specific. Now, when you are dealing with uh, uh, um, geophysics, we have a professor from geophysics who will come here and all other studies so that they can give this advice on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Say in my bread TV. Gagaragasa online TV. My bread TV. Get in TV, my padakarwa. Tarit in the shot and tarwa.